Hi friends! Thanks for joining me today. It's so nice out and the weather is getting so good. So with all my excitement for this tutorial, I thought it would be super fun to make something glittery. Uh, clearly I love everything glittery and bright. Um, what I thought we would do today is, if you guys haven't seen the Kate Spade Champion Glitter Keds, you must Google them. They are literally the cutest little shoes in the whole wide world. And I don't know about you, but I have a special event coming up, aka my wedding. Once everything that's going on globally kind of calms down, I'll be able to officially tie the knot with my babe. And I don't know about you, but I'm a flats kind of girl, and I'd much rather wear some kind of funky flat than just <laughs> make myself suffer all night in a pair of heels, although I can fully appreciate and love high heels, I just like them on everybody else but me. So Kate Spade Champion Glitter Heads are super cute, however, like I said, with everything going on globally, we have to tighten up our purse strings. So this tutorial is a super budget-friendly rendition of the Champion Keds, which are insanely cute and insanely comfortable. So let's get started. All right, guys, so what you'll need, I found these Ked-like shoes at Walmart. They were $10 for a pair. They actually have a little bit of shine to them, which is amazing. Even though we are gonna cover them in glitter, I thought having a shiny base would be a really good idea. So you need a pair of shoes. You also need some glitter. Now, the Champion Keds that I love so, 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 so much are kind of like this rose gold, iridescent, it's not white, it's not cream, it's not rose gold, it's kind of like the best of all three worlds. Um, so what I ended up doing was making my own glitter, as you can see. So it's kind of the best of everybody. I have gold, pink, rose gold, um, some iridescent glitter, some big fat glitters, which I will show you shortly. But I created my own glitter that we are going to put on our shoes. So you need glitter. You can do whatever color you want. Also you need some really flexible strong adhesive. So I reco this E6000. I also got it at Walmart. Um, it's great for fabric. It's great for all weather conditions. It's industrial strength so you're going to want to be super careful when you're using it. So we need our glitter. We need our glue. I'm also going to be painting on the glue with a brush. So just get a cheapy little brush from uh, Dollarama. And then on the Kate Spade Keds, they have this really cute, um, it, I think it's a clover on the back of the shoe. Now, I don't have clovers, but I thought because these are gonna eventually be my little wedding shoes, um, I'm gonna keep with tradition and do something borrowed, something blue. So I found these really cool, grommets that actually screw in. Um, hang on one sec, I'm just going to take them out of the package. But they're studs and they are like little cones, which is awesome. And they literally will screw right into the back of the shoe and that'll be my something blue and it'll also be reminiscent of the Kate Spade um, grommet on the back so that's kind of fun now I am going to be taking out the shoelaces and replacing them with a satin ribbon which we will make um, I thought about making um, I thought about buying bias tape or just a big fat satin ribbon but I didn't feel like it would have enough body I really want these shoes to have a nice big bow on them so I'm gonna cover the actual shoelace with the satin fabric and then make a bow that we can pin on so that they will be photo ready. Let's get started. So as mentioned, here is my little glitter trough, which I ended up using the plastic side that the glue came in, just because I wanted to combine all of these different varieties of glitter to make one big pile of glitter. Now, what I did was I did a combo of these little packets here. I did rose gold, iridescent gold and a lighter pink and that's great 
I ended up getting more glitters. So I know for these shoes to cover them, I'm gonna need a lot of glitter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more into my container. And how fun are these? I also got big fat glitters. And we're gonna add those too. Not too many of the pink, just some for fun. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the gold and give it a good mix. Now I'm just using the back of my paintbrush to mix everything in, but how fun is that? That looks like a party in a little trough. So once everything has been mixed thoroughly, we're gonna take our laces out and start applying this to our shoes with the adhesive. Now, I do have parchment paper laid down on my work surface. And the reason I have parchment paper down and it's not fastened to the table is that every time I put glitter on here, I wanna be able to pick it up and pour it back in the trough. So we're gonna save our little studs for later, which we will apply once our shoes are dry. Now for my tongue, I'm not gonna do the entire tongue because I'm just gonna end up with glitter all down the bottom um, and inside my shoe. So all I'm gonna do is put a small blob holding the back of the glue. God, my dad would get so mad at me if I wasn't gluing properly. So put a blob on there, put the cap back on, brush my adhesive all over so I'm covering the entire surface. Doing a nice straight line too across the tongue. And I'm actually just going to dab this in the glitter because it's just the tongue and I don't want to throw a whole bunch of glitter everywhere. So just making sure that I've covered all of the glue and shaking it off. Awesome. Uh, funsies. Okay. So now I'm going to continue on. Um, I would like to keep this surface free of glitter for right now, so I'm going to start with the toes. Just because I want something I can hold on to when I'm working. And you just do a bit at a time. I'm going to get a dry brush so that I can wipe the dry area. So just where the glitter is sticking on the rubber, which doesn't have adhesive, but it is just sticking because of static. I'm just gonna brush that off. Perfect. So now that we have a bit on our toes, let's just continue on. Okay, so where we're at right now, how fun are these? So super, super, super sparkly. So I'm gonna let these dry and then fill in any holes or discrepancies. I feel like there's just not, if there's just not enough glitter for my personal taste, then I'll wanna fill it in. Um, but for the most part, I'd say these are pretty freaking sparkly. Now, because there are so many different colors of glitter on here, um, it does look like there are some splotchy spots, um, but really it's just covered in glitter, which is so fun. Um, I'm going to leave 
this section here alone until I complete the other shoe because I don't want to lose a lot of glitter into the sole of my foot once I'm actually filling this area because of the little holes I don't want all the glitter to fall through onto the sole of the shoe so we're gonna hold on doing that until we finish the other shoe you know one thing that I was thinking might be really fun and cute to do if you too want to make your own little champion glitter kids it might be kind of fun if you have a bridal party or if you have some people standing in your wedding whatever color they're wearing you use that color for the glitter on your shoes so example if your bridal party's color is coral or pink or purple or it's just a whole different array of all these different color blues it would be really fun to make all of the glitter on your shoes that color so corresponding with your bridal party which I think would be really fun or another neat idea would be if you were to get all the girls the shoes and have a little DIY party so that they have some cute little flats to change into at the end of the evening because we all know whatever shoes they're arriving in they're not leaving in so it would be fun if you had a little DIY craft party for you and your girls to make little after hours flats to change into once all of the formal photos and the formalness of the day is done I think that would be really cute So I actually decided to get really smart with the covering of the hole. I got out my hot glue gun and because the grommets are metal, you can cover them with hot glue and then just peel the glue off after and it's not going to damage anything. So just as so, I just took my hot glue gun and went nice and slowly only on the metal and just went around and around. creating this nice little puff on top. So these ones are all dry, you can see. Um, I did rip this one off as a tester and it came right off, which was amazing. So uh, that's perfect. So just make sure you fill in, go around all of the grommets, staying only on the metal, and then we can start painting our fabric. So while we wait for our shoes to dry, now's the time that we make our bows and our fancy shoelaces. So I'm gonna clean up my glitter. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm definitely gonna keep this because I will want to fill in any of these spots that I find uh, might be a little bare looking, but I'm not gonna do that until these have dried completely. So we're gonna move on to fabric. So for our ribbons that we're using in the shoelaces, essentially we need to replicate our shoelace. So I've taken the liberty and I've actually already made a giant rectangle. So my shoelaces measure about 30 inches. So I've made a big rectangle about 30 inches by two and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to create a bias tape with this giant piece of um, fabric that we are going to cut on the bias, so on a 45, and that's going to act as our shoelace. Now I also want to make a nice big fat bow that's just going to safety pin onto the top of the shoelace once they're tied um, just because I know a lot of times photographers will shoot the shoes and it's really cute and I just want the bows to be perfect. So I'm just going to make sure I have a detachable bow that we can put on our shoes when they're tied up and they're a perfect little bow and they're photo ready. So let's get to making our rectangles for our bows and we'll cut and sew. So this will actually be our bow. So this measurement here is five inches by five and a half inches. And this will be the bow. Let's cut one right side up. And then I also want to make little tails. Um, 
not as wide. So we'll use these guidelines to go straight up. So seven inches is the measurement I'm going to use. Lastly, we just need the loop that connects the bow to the bow tails. So we're going to take our bow loop, we have two pieces because we have two bows, and we're just going to fold our pieces in half, shiny side together. And just sew the side seams down. So these are our bow tails, and we have them pinned together, shiny side together. And we're just going to sew across the top. So we're just going to sew across the top and come down, but stop here, and then continue sewing here and across. And we're going to use this little opening to flip our tails inside out. Same with the bows. So for our laces, we've cut a bias tape, but now we actually have to create the bias tape. So what we're going to do is iron this all out, and we take our fabric, fold it in half, and then fold those halves in half, and so, And that's what's going to create our lace. You take that half and use that fold line as a guideline. Hold your fabric inward and press. Be really careful with the steam on your iron at this point. I always have a tendency to burn my hands. Once both ends are folded into the center line, you just fold in and press. Give one final press so it's all nice and even. And I literally am pressing, not dragging the, um, I'm literally pressing, not dragging the iron because I don't want to stretch the band and warp it. So just repeat that on the other piece. While we're here, we might as well press our bow components all open. Now I'm not going to flip the corners on my bows because I want them to be full when they flip. So I'm just going to leave this as is.
Okay, so now that everything is pressed open, we're back at the sewing machine. We're going to sew a straight line down both sides of our bias tape so that it's nice and strong for our shoelaces. And then we're going to put our bows together. Yes, believe it or not, these are gonna be bows. So anything that has a little hole, just sew it closed. Okay friends, so now that we have our laces done and also our cute little bows, which are so nice, um, we're going to give the shoes about 24 hours to dry. Um, as for the glue itself, it does say it can take 24 to 72 hours to cure. I'm a little excited, so I'm going to give the shoes 24 hours to dry. Now, within that time period, I am just going to go over them and make sure there's no discrepancies or um, where I feel that some glitter needs to be filled in. I'm definitely going to give these shoes a full 24 hours to dry before I even think about lacing them up and putting them on for a show. Now, I'm not going to go too far with these shoes because I do want to use these as my wedding shoes and I want them to stay fresh and clean and cute, but we will do a little tour de France with the shoes on. So I'll be back tomorrow to finish this up. Hey guys, so we're back again today. Now that our glitter kids, glitter kids, have officially dried and we have all of our layers of glitter and sequins and glue on our shoes, they shed a lot. So just be prepared for that. The final details we have left to put on today are our laces, our cute little bows, Please keep in mind that these are my wedding shoes, so that's why they have that fun little bow. Otherwise, you could just leave it with the laces, uh, which we did make out of satin. Um, and then the little something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, uh, little spike detail in the back. Um, so we'll just show you how to put those in. Now, I did get those at Leather Supply Sewing Depot in Toronto, so you can totally get these but they're little studs and they screw in, which is really great. And basically all I did was go through the back center seam on the shoes. So let's get to putting on our final details and take these dogs for a little walk. 